first of all, talk about the the tour. I mean, yeah. re review where all you've been <laughs> talking about things. Yeah, so so we got a stopgap spending plan done, which was a great step in the right direction. So as this week, I've left uh, Springfield and I've been driving around the state. We're, we're in Rockford on Tuesday, Rockford, Moline, uh, Galesburg. Yesterday, we were in Peoria and Quincy. Uh, today we were up in Champaign this morning, now in Effingham, one of my favorite towns, great community here, mm -hmm. and then going down to Fairfield. And tonight I'm going to stay in Ducoin at the uh, governor's residence down there at the state fairgrounds, so it's going to be nice. Awesome. And, and then uh, you'll hit the Metro East area as yeah, well? Yeah, me Metro East uh, after Ducoin tomorrow and then home to Springfield. Okay. And uh, why why are you doing this whirlwind? Uh, yeah. You're, 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 uh, what's, what's the world looking for? You're, you're, you're traveling the state. <laughs> yeah. Barnstorming yeah, the state. That's the world looking <laughs> that's for. That's a good word. Yeah, we really want to meet with leaders in the media mm -hmm. and uh, community leaders and talk about what's been going on in Springfield and give an update on this stopgap spending plan. You know, we still don't have a truly balanced budget and we still don't have reforms to make us more competitive, to grow more jobs, protect taxpayers, get political reform for term limits and redistricting. We're fighting for big change. St some of that is still to come, but the step last week was important to get to that reform. So last week we did three things. Mm -hmm. We stopped Speaker Madigan and his majority from passing a wildly out of balance budget. They wanted to pass a $7 billion out of balance budget. Mm -hmm. That would have been a disaster, unaffordable spending, it would have forced a big tax hike with no reform. So we stopped that and we got some more affordable, um, mo more moderate spending going now. So that was a good step for taxpayers. Number two, we got schools open on time with some more money. All schools getting more money. Mm -hmm. um, and we got that without uh, having to bail out Chicago public schools. Chicago schools have been mismanaged for decades. They have huge deficits in debt. And Speaker Madigan and his supermajority were trying to demand that Illinois taxpayers send a half a billion dollars more up to Chicago to bail that system out. We said, no way, not fair to taxpayers. We stood up against that and we were able to block that. Now, Chicago, we are sending a little bit more state money to, to, to Chicago, but all schools are getting their proportionate amount more. It's fair and it's an affordable amount more. So that's a good step for taxpayers. And then the third uh, big thing we accomplished uh, was getting pension reform front and center on the table. We passed a um, pension uh, reform bill pension parity for teachers pensions, but that will only become law if all pensions in the state get a significant reform so we can save taxpayers billions of dollars. And that will be voted on after the uh, election in November. So that was a nice step too. Uh, I think uh, on the public education front, I think a lot of our, our public educators in our viewing area um, are happy with the 100% funding. Yeah, we got it back up to the full foundation level. In fact, some districts are getting even more than the than the foundation level. And that's that's good. You know, we've been uh, Speaker Madigan's supermajority has cut school funding four times in the last ten years. Cut it well below the foundation level. I demanded more money for schools last year. We got more. This year, I demanded even more. We got up to the full foundation level. I'm a big advocate for public school teachers and students, and we should have the best schools in every school district around the state. And I'm I'm uh, going to. Every year going forward, I'm going to put more money into our schools. Well, how much money has been going to Chicago these last few years? <laughs> well, is, is that, is that a yeah, Chicago's been getting a special deal for a long time on a lot of levels. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, Speaker Madigan and his super majority, they're controlled, you know, they're from there. Um, and Chicago has always kind of gotten preferential treatment. And what, you know, I work for the people in Chicago, but I work for people in Effingham and DuCoin and Rockford too. I work for everybody. And we need more equal treatment across the board. And that's why I want to see the school funding formula changed. Uh, the way we allocate money across uh, the state isn't fair. A lot of smaller districts, rural districts, don't get uh, the right level of support so they can keep high quality schools. So we're going to get more money into the school system and make it more equitable with a new funding formula. And I think uh, you mentioned pension reform, and, and that's up. Yeah. Uh, I mean, you. I think the last time we talked when you were campaigning, that was a big topic. It is. It is. And we need pension reform. We actually need three types of reforms. Mm -hmm. We need political reform, so our democracy actually works for the people again. Mm -hmm. We need uh, government reform, like pension reform and property tax relief. Mm -hmm. And we need economic reform to grow more jobs. Illinois is not competitive. Effingham is doing pretty well economically, competing. But the regulations hurt uh, Effingham's ability to recruit companies. A lot of our manufacturers are moving over to Indiana that has more yeah, pro-job creation uh, um, policies. Our workers' comp system is 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 broken in Illinois. Workers' comp costs mm -hmm. five times as much as for many employers as it was over in Indiana or Texas. We need to be com competitive. But the core issue is we need political reform. You know, we've been a one-party state for 35 years in the General Assembly, mm -hmm. and we've been a one-party state even with the governor. You know, we had two governors prior to me who were in the same party as uh, Speaker Madigan. They were competing with each other to see who could spend more, and it kind of spent us into uh, into a ditch, unfortunately, with a lot of deficit and a lot of debt. 
And we need two things to reform our political system so it works for the people of Illinois. We need term limits so nobody stays in office more than eight years. I'm going to term limit myself. I think everybody should have term limits on themselves, eight years. Mm -hmm. And we need fair maps. We need redistricting reform. Mm -hmm. We have gerrymandered districts that look like spaghetti noodles that are designed to protect the incumbents in office. I don't know, your viewers may or may not know this. Um, Two-thirds of the elections uh, around the state in November don't have an opponent. Two-thirds of the candidates are running unopposed. Mm -hmm. There's no choices. The, the, the democracy doesn't work that way. We need competitive races. We need g districts that aren't gerrymandered. And we need term limits so the power of incumbency isn't so dominant. I think a lot of people here in the downstate can appreciate pension reform and uh, workman's comp reform. I, th I think they get that and yep. where you're coming from and how much it costs the state. But they're also concerned especially before the stopgap was passed. I mean, a lot of people were concerned about a lot of state services not going forward, whether you're talking about mm -hmm. uh, counseling for sex abuse victims. Yeah, a lot like of that. human services were suffering. You right. know, here's the tragedy in Illinois. We have been going down the wrong road for so long. Our deficits and our uh, uh, debt is so big and employers leaving that we've not properly funded our human services for years. In fact, we're the only state that asks uh, service providers for for uh, vulnerable families or those who need uh, victims of, of, of uh, who need support. Mm -hmm. We don't pay the bills, and, and a lot of those agencies have been suffering. We've said, let's get a balanced budget, truly balanced budget. Let's grow the economy, and, and let's, let's have a, an expanded tax base so we have the resources. If we're competitive, we can have the money to be compassionate and support those in need. I think a lot of people are wondering, do you have to get to the point where you're scaring the daylights out of people to, to get even the stopgap budget? Past. I mean, a lot of people were very concerned. Yeah, no, and I, believe me, I've been very concerned too. You know, I ran for governor because Illinois has been so broken in our system. You know, I've been a business builder. We've, I've created lots of uh, companies in Illinois. I love it here. I raised our six kids here. My, my grandparents are dairy farmers. I love Illinois. And I've seen what's happened in our state. You know, we have fewer jobs today than 17 years ago. We have lower family incomes than 17 years ago. Um, we've got the highest property taxes in America. And it was still rampant self-dealing and corruption and cronyism in our government. It's not working for the people. So I said, I'm going to volunteer. I'm not going to take a salary or a pension. I'm going to go to Springfield, shake it up and change the system so it works. Term limits, fair maps, workers' comp reform, and really um, a, 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 give power back to the people. Let the people control the, the costs in their own communities so we can bring down our, the burden of our government. If anything, do you think you've proven that you're willing to fight the good fight? I mean, two years later, you're you're still at you're still toe to toe with. The, yeah, well, change is hard. You know, it just shows how much we need to reform the system. You know, Speaker Madigan has had the majority for decades. They've never had to reform. They've never had to change. They've never had to compromise. So they're a little shocked that I'm actually standing up and saying, "How about if we actually have a balanced budget?" I've looked 25 years. I cannot, cannot find a balanced budget anywhere in Illinois' history. It's what's created our, our problem. We either don't pay our pensions, which is basically borrowing from the pensions at 8%. That's mm -hmm. what that means when you don't fund them. Uh, we, we don't pay our bills, and a lot of that accrues 12% interest that your viewers pay. Or we just uh, borrow from the bond market to fund our operations. It's killing us, and it's pushing our employers out. We need balanced budgets with more economic growth. And uh, so how important was that stopgap budget that got passed? Well, it's very important. It's not the long-term answer, but it's the step to the long-term answer. Mm -hmm. It uh, stopped a lot of the deficit spending. It got the schools open with an affordable amount more money, got pension reform on the table, set up with incentives mm -hmm. for the Chicago uh, legislators to vote for it with the real incentives. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a motivator for them. And, and we got agreement, bipartisan agreement, that after the election, um, reforms on workers' comp and local control and, and pensions will get voted. Here's the fact. We should have voted on these issues before. It just shows how broken the system is. But Speaker Madigan, supermajority, said to me in May, they, they see the reforms. Many of, our, many of their uh, legislators agree with them, but they said no tough votes until after the election. They, they kind of said, let's see who picks up seats. If Speaker Madigan gets more power, gets more seats, already they're in a supermajority, um, boy, heaven help us, because they're, 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 reforms are going to be uh, hard to come by, and they'll probably push through a big tax hike with no reforms. If we can have a balance in the legislature where Republicans and Democrats have a more equal voice with each other, we can have balance and bipartisan compromise, get reforms on term limits, fair maps, workers' comp. The, the people in Illinois, here in Effingham County and around the state, have an opportunity to stand up and get their voices heard for reform here in November. Do you really feel like compromise was reached with this stopgap budget? I mean, 
we hear that word a lot coming from Springfield, and it's the first time in a long time. <laughs> but to actually, do you really feel like there was compromise? I, I, I do, I do. You know, both sides um, uh, in the in the stopgap spending plan. There's some things that I think are probably you know, too high a spending. Um, and, and they, they um, gave up on um, spending that they wanted to be even way higher. And they also gave up on a bailout for Chicago when it was a big deal. If, if we hadn't stood up against that, that would have been jammed through. It would be a half a billion dollars more cost to people around the state. And last one, um, do you, what, what, is there light at the end of the tunnel as far as getting an actual budget passed for the yes, state? Yes, I think there really is. Uh, um, what, what the Democrats under Speaker Madigan said is they were scared to take tough votes before the election. If you look at the history of Illinois, the really tough votes and the changing, um, the changing uh, of the system has only happened after an election in the lame duck session when people are, some are leaving office and so they could be put on votes where it doesn't matter. That, so we'll have a window of about 60 days after the election where I think some tough votes and some good compromises uh, around our reforms can happen. Workers' comp reform, property tax relief, pension reform, and term limits. That's what we're going to be pushing big time. So you're looking forward to November 9th? <laughs> <laughs> Very much so. All right. Thank you, Governor. Thank you for your time.